Previously, I explored the origin of money and how the material gold became synonymous with it. However, I also want to explore the functional ways that gold can also be used. But for that, I'll need a larger amount than what we panned before. In fact, the small vial of gold that I had panned for previously in Utah ended up breaking on me and the pieces of gold in it were so small, I couldn't even find them. So, to get a larger amount of gold, I met back up with Alan, this time in the Golden State, California, to collect some more gold. Also, William Osman and his cameraman John joined us to help. Is it how to make everything or anything? Everything. Everything. Close enough. So I'm back here with Alan and also got William with me. We're gonna do a different type of panning this time without water called dry panning? Yeah, dry washing. Dry washing. We're in the Mojave Desert. It's dry. There's no running water anywhere around. So we use something like a dry washer. Pretty simple machine. We shovel dirt in here, but you've got this expanded metal mesh. So let's everything that's about a half an inch by uh, three eighths fall through into this little hopper here and it'll slide down. There's a hole right here and it falls onto this screen. Over here, I've got a two stroke engine. It's just a leaf blower and I bring air underneath. This is gonna make a huge mess, isn't it? It's gonna make a mess, it's dirty. So the air blows up through here. So it's both blowing and shaking to right. remove all the lighter stuff. That air will partially suspend the material and then the shaking, it, that just gives the energy and kind of lifts everything that allows the heavy stuff to work its way down underneath. Okay. And then it kind of jumps down between the levels? Yeah, most of the gold should be right here. Okay. If, if it gets down to here, something's really not set correctly. That being said, um, dry washers are inherently inefficient, at least compared to water processing systems. I think my retention is probably 80 to 90%. So there's a lot more larger pieces of gold in this area then? Yeah. We're gonna find really big nuggets. We could. Yeah. <laughs> How do we decide what to put into it? Is there a certain logic behind where we dig from? As with everything, gravity pulls it down. So we're in the bottom of the wash where any rain, anything, earthquakes, anything will move it this direction. I think once upon a time, there was a river that, that covered this whole area and has pretty much left a deposit that is miles across. I'm excited to be disappointed. <laughs> so you imagine buckets of gold <laughs> and we're gonna have not buckets of gold. Probably not buckets. We'll, we will get gold, I don't know how much. There'll be a lot of dust. Bring a dust mask. We don't want dust in our lungs. Plus, um, there is the risk of a, a disease called valley fever. That's it's fungal spores that live in the soil. Sweet. Let's make a dust storm. Hopefully it's full of nuggets. Someone needs me. Here to serve. You want to metal detect the pan? See if there's anything That'd in there? That would be cool. So it says maybe. Maybe for anything. So there could be staples. There might be a little thicker in here. Show me what you got. What's the difference between the ridges? You got the small and the big one. This is for cleanup for the fines once you got all this stuff done. He's right there. Oh yeah. Let's see if there's anything bigger. What was the price thing again? So if it's big enough to see, yeah. a little speck, big enough to see, you're worth at least a penny. There's another little piece. That's all of it? So far. Nice. You got a gram or a little more probably. Here's what we're looking for. Oh wow. A little nugget. That's pretty good. That's really good. Hello. What do you give that on a scale of one to ten? In terms of? Like being stoked. Um, I go with a seven. That's pretty good. So that's a good. It's a good, it's a good piece. It's nothing I'm gonna write home about. You know, it's probably like a third of a gram. Okay. Something like that. What do you guess worth? Ten bucks. It's kind of sad when you think of it that way. 
We should have a competition where someone gets a job at Denny's and then someone gold mines and we see who <laughs> makes the most money after a week. I suspect Denny's would win. <laughs> <laughs> there you hear it. You heard it here first, folks. Denny's. More profitable than gold mining. <laughs> have you ever screamed Eureka? <laughs> no. I scream lots of things, but never Eureka. Yeah. It's usually woohoo! We can do it now, just get it out of the way. <laughs> Eureka! We got ten dollars, fifteen dollars. Oh, we probably got uh, 30, 40 bucks. Nice. Oh, nice. I'm not giving up my day job. Thirty, forty bucks for half a day. So you're not gonna quit YouTubing? And well, this actually makes more money than YouTube does, <laughs> apparently. So, with our golden hand, we headed off to grab dinner at Denny's, who we really should have gotten as a sponsor for this. So thanks to you, Alan, and I guess. William helped a little. There's metal in your drone! We got uh, about, you said about $30 worth of gold, maybe a gram. I'm gonna weigh it now and see exactly how much. Wow, only 0.3 grams. It's a lot less. A more in here. Let me pour just a little bit more gold out. There we go. Totally a legitimate flake. The big goal coming up is that I'm going to make electricity from scratch. If you do that, you need wire to transfer it. A unique attribute about gold is it is one of the most ductile and malleable metals that exists, meaning it can be easily stretched and worked to super thin proportions. In fact, it can supposedly be stretched to as thin as 5 microns, meaning my 1.3 grams of gold could in theory be stretched out to be around 2 miles or 3 kilometers long. I'm going to put that to the test now and attempt to pull wire from this which involves melting it into an ingot, then using a little metal press here to get it kind of started, and then I'm going to draw it through several slowly narrowing holes and just slowly stretch it and stretch it. And I'll see how far I can get. In terms of transmitting electricity, gold is actually the third in conductivity behind silver and copper. And while I've sourced the ore for both of these metals, I haven't processed them into a raw metal yet. Eventually, I want to apply what I learned here to pulling wire from copper, since a pure gold wire is going to be a little bit ridiculously expensive. But such copper wiring is oftentimes gold plated to take advantage of another one of gold's properties, resistance to corrosion. With the tools and draw holes I have, I should in theory be able to reach at least 4 feet in length. But I've never done this before, so my results might not be that great. It's taking a little longer than I expected, so let's try out a new toy, a new kiln. Should hopefully melt this a little bit quicker. Come on. Come on, little buddy. So I didn't really make an ingot. I thought it would lay flat in the mold, but I'll just crush it into ingot shape. Hopefully not lose it. It's so malleable. So I'm curious, how much money did I end up losing accidentally here? $16. Just disappeared. If this goes flying, it's gonna really suck. It's gone! Hey Chris, can I borrow 50 bucks? Oh wait, I got it. Alright, let's not do that again. No! Little hole. It's conveniently there. It's getting thinner. Just, you know, it's like a centimeter. Almost. I'm hoping for like four feet at least. Maybe a kilometer. We'll see. Shaping the small piece of metal was pretty tedious. However, well, important step is annealing the metal as you stretch it. Otherwise, it risks snapping on you. Unfortunately, this was something I struggled to get the hang of. and ended up snapping the wire over and over again and had to remelt and start all over. Apparently just lost $8.20 in that attempt right there. So it took a lot of work, but I got a little bit of gold. Got about five and a half inches 
which is not as much as I had hoped. I've been told that's completely average, but I was able to get a little bit of wire. I think it should work. So I'm gonna try it out. Light bulb here. Okay, that's success. I am transmitting electricity. I made a wire. It was uh, not quite several kilometers long that I had hoped. I'm gonna have to see if I can find a practical use for this. But first, if you aren't familiar with William Osmond and his channel, he builds his own cool and random stuff and was a lot of fun to film with. So be sure to check out his channel and his video where he sees how many chicken nuggets he can get with one gold nugget. Tragically for him, during out of control wildfires six months ago, his house burned down and he's been without a home since then. I'd love to help him one day by building him a house from scratch, which has been kind of a large long off goal I've had. So with that in mind, I thought I'd have a little fun and build a practice house that's to scale to the short wire that I produced. I managed to build a little house and even wire it for William here. He didn't ask for this, but I made it for him anyways, and I'm gonna send it to him. Definitely would love to someday build him a whole house entirely from scratch. It's just gonna take a lot of time. If he approves my work, maybe I'll get started, start planting some trees. But this will open the door for future electronics and generating electricity from scratch itself. I can start applying this knowledge to copper and make some cheaper wire. This is about $10 for each inch of wire. So uh, it'd be pretty expensive to do this full scale. All right, let's get this packed up. Why is this box so heavy? If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.